Hi, my name's Pauline Green and I'm president of the International Cooperative Alliance. It's a very real pleasure to get the chance to talk to you at your conference today. I'm just sorry I couldn't be there in person. And I want to take the chance to say to you how much I value everything that our membership across the world and you particularly have done in celebration of the International Year of Cooperatives. And you know, now that we're in 2013, I'm being asked by a lot of people, what did the International Year of Cooperatives mean to the movement? And what impact is it going to have going forward on the cooperative engagement in the global economy? And I want to try and answer both of those questions for you today, and in particular add another. How can you help to make this cooperative decade that we're now in a success? So let's start with what the International Year of Cooperatives meant to the movement. Well, as the president, I was able uh, and very privileged to spend uh, cooperative events all around the world in 35 countries last year. And what I saw and what I know has happened as a result of the International Year is that the movement across the world has never in its 175 year history been as cohesive, been as confident, been as enthusiastic about its common shared identity as it is today. And that springs from the fact that we were given by the United Nations not just the very rich gift of an international year, but we were given a slogan, cooperative enterprises build a better world, and we were given a logo. And those things encapsulated what the ICA really wanted its membership to do. We wanted you to show that logo and slogan all across the world in every way possible. And we've seen it. We've seen it on invoices, on brochures, on posters, on, on distribution trucks, uh, on every possible way, on the web, uh, on everything that you can think of, shopping bags in Finland and, uh, and, and invoices in the UK. So on and on, we've seen that slogan appear. And at a stroke, that has lifted our visibility across the world. And then people have also grown in confidence because they've learnt from the information we've published about the size and the strength of our global movement. It is true that the cooperative movement is already playing a huge part in the global economy. Our figures from 2010 demonstrate that despite the financial collapse, despite what's happening in so many parts of the developed world in particular, the cooperative movement has continued to grow. First and foremost, the turnover of the largest 300 cooperatives in the world, many of them in the United States, is actually worth just under 2 trillion US dollars. On top of that, the movement together across the world is owned by over a billion people and we employ about 100 million people. We are talking about a very substantial business sector. So altogether, that message has grown around the world and the movement, no matter how small, and no matter what a sm the size of the country, the movement has come to see what together we represent around the world. And that's given them a huge boost in confidence uh, and it's reinvigorated their sense of the value of cooperative enterprise. So there is a desire for more in the cooperative movement. There's a desire to see us go on to build the cooperative family of businesses across the world. So there's been a huge impact on the cooperative movement itself in terms of its own self-confidence, its own cohesion uh, and its own visibility. And what about our impact going forward? What do we do now? The international year is finished, but it was only the beginning. It was ever only designed to be the beginning, the beginning of this cooperative decade. Because not only did we have the international year, in 2012, but we were able to demonstrate in that year that certain sectors of our business had really grown across the five, four or five years of the financial collapse. If you look at our cooperative banking sector and our cooperative insurance sector, they have continued to grow and the figures are staggering. So we're not only growing, we're growing on our core strengths, advertising our sustainability, not just in environmental terms, but in the longevity of our business, in our business relationships, in uh, the business ethics we promote. These things show us to be different from the prevailing traditional 
corporate sector which has failed so badly. In consumer co-ops, we're showing uh, that we're a different sort of business. In housing, we're still there. We're offering more homes to people who've lost their homes in this collapse. And we're continuing to grow and to advertise our cooperative difference, the way in which we run our cooperative housing. In agriculture, we see huge changes in the agriculture around the world, but a greater demand for more and more cooperative energy. So there is something that's still needed and something that we can still do. And that's what 2013 is about. We adopted a blueprint for a cooperative decade in Manchester. That blueprint is based on five key themes. First and foremost, participation. We are the most participatory form of business in the world. And we have to make sure that we don't rest on our laurels. We have to grow and energize our membership out there to engage more with us. And there's more. If we want to bring young people into our structures, if we want to really maximize our engagement with the external world, we have to start pushing out our discussions on the social media, on networking across the IT systems. We have to start making ordinary members of the public engage in some of the discussions we're having about our cooperative difference. At the same time, of course, we have to retain the membership's right to decide on issues. But why not say to the wider public, this is how we operate. We're thinking of changing to this or that and engage them in that discussion. Let's open up our participation to wider audiences. As I say, preserving our right as members to decide and not damaging or demeaning our membership role, but always having a view to engaging as many people as we can. We, the young, young people involved in the Occupy movement wanted an impact, they wanted a voice, they wanted to, to have an engagement in a fairer economic system. We can give them that and it's our role to open up to them. So we want to build on our participatory systems uh, which are already well established. The second key theme is our sustainability and when we talk about sustainability we're not just talking about climate change and, and the environment and sustaining the future of the planet, important as that is. We're talking about sustainability in a much more holistic way. We're talking about it as relationships between, uh, between people, labour relations, business ethics, good governance, community engagement, making sure that we're building a world that has democracy embedded in it so that we can uh, make sure that the world is, rids itself of despots and tyrants. These are all about the sustainability of our model because we engage in all those areas. So we need to redefine the way in which people look at business efficiency. Business efficiency has become almost synonymous with profitability. We have to change that. We have to say actually efficiency is about something much bigger, much better balanced than simply the, 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 the if you like, the, the red-necked approach for a, a profitability. We have to make sure that our sustainability model is built on a much better balance of all those features of sustainability and not just um, profitability. So we want to make sure the co-op movement is seen as the business model that cares for the wider aspects of sustainability and to build in a better balance uh, in that model of efficiency. And that's down to all of us in our businesses to do that. The third key theme is our identity. And, and I think there's two aspects to this. One is how we perceive ourselves within the movement. What are the key features uh, of our internal message about who we are? But secondly, how do we project that outwards? Because we know that most people will understand the cooperative as, as a model of business. They won't understand uh, the detail that we, as those involved, engaged and committed to the movement, need to know. So we have to preserve the principles on which our movement is projected. That's what we need to do as a movement. We need to be true to it. We need to talk, walk the talk of our principles because just one failure will damage all of us. So to get the principles fully embedded, fully engaged in management uh, uh, through the ambassadors of our members out on the ground is a key issue. But then to project the key difference 
of the cooperative message and the decade, the cooperative decade that we're living in is something that we all need to do as well. And one of the things the International Cooperative Alliance is doing is looking to see how we can develop a mark that will take the, the strand, the, the, the trend of the international year, the colours maybe or, or, or the slogan, take that and develop it into a cooperative decade message uh, until 2020. And we'll be doing that and, and revealing it at the, at the Cape Town conference, which you can see advertised uh, behind me, that will take place in November this year. It's a general assembly, first one in Africa. We hope that you'll come and we hope that you'll share in the excitement of the, the development of the blueprint for a cooperative decade that will be revealed there and the new identity mark that we hope will, members will absorb and use just like they use the international year one. The fourth element that we need to look at, the fourth and fifth, which are legal frameworks and capital, are both key themes to make sure our business model can thrive. So those are the five themes. It's participation, it's sustainability, identity, legal framework and capital. And that's where the decade has to concentrate if we're going to, to have a confident, enthusiastic, committed co-op movement developing across the world and becoming a much more powerful uh, model uh, in the global economy. What can you do? So much, because all of that I've just described will not be done by the ICA. We can help, we can promote, we can drive it, we can suggest ways of moving, we can work with the global institutions to lobby for it. You have to do it on the ground. Your businesses must walk the talk. Your businesses must protect our member-owned business model and you must go out there and proselytise for it. I know from everything that happened in the United States over the last year that there is an enthusiasm for taking forward our model of business because we believe, and I'm sure you believe, that this is our moment. And we're being told by key Nobel economists uh, and by other key players in the economy and in the political world that the time has come for the cooperative movement to show just what it can do as a people-owned and people-centred model of business in this world. We believe in democracy for poli pol politics. Why not in business too? Why not show what a democratic member-owned business model can do? The question is, what are you going to do?